market seems a lot stronger this year than last year. Um, we've had four consecutive months of gains, which Mark Newton, our head of technical strategy, says is, is very rare. We already had a pretty nice January, a very strong February. Uh, I, to me, if the market gains 20% this year, uh, which would match what it did in 2023, it wouldn't surprise me. But I think the, the character would be very different, that it would be a lot more sectors participating. And, you know, in, in some ways, I think if, if, if we are up 20% this year, I think small caps could be up a lot more, as much as 50%. So we're not going to have a down year. Uh, that you're taking off the table? Or what is it that would have to happen to throw this, you know, your, your somewhat bullish or pretty bullish uh, forecast in jeopardy? What would have to happen? I think two things would probably derail a, an equity move of 20 percent this year, you know, something even pushing the markets down. One would be if inflation uh, reasserts itself in a way that the Fed has to reverse its action and become quite hawkish again. Uh, I think that would terrify markets. Uh, the second is if monetary policy is so restrictive now that we slip into a recession. I, I don't think we're losing that much economic momentum, but, but either would, would be negative for stocks. Okay, and so it broadens out. Do you have a a feel for for interest rates? Is that how much? How important is that to you? Because we got a jobs number tomorrow that could move uh, that could move rates and, and the prospects for cuts later this year. You probably would be bolt more bullish if you could say we're going to have four cuts this year, wouldn't you? Uh, yes. I mean, I to me, more cuts would be easier for markets to sort of feel comfortable because. It would also have, as you're pointing out, downward pressure on interest rates. I've been pretty surprised that interest rates have moved up this year and the stock market has been able to sort of look past that because I, I think they're viewing it as rates are rising for the right reasons. But, yeah, I, I, you know, a better scenario is, of course, inflation's falling visibly enough for the Fed to begin cut, cutting with confidence. When you... Uh when Bitcoin was 4,000, it came down from 20,000, and, and uh, you used to come on and say, yeah, I, it, by the end of the year, it's going back to 20,000. I, I don't know how you, how you, you feel confident doing those things. Now, you've done it again, really, and uh, with the, I don't know, what did you say by the end of next year? What, 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 where could it be in your, in your view? Well, I, I think that, in the, you know, sometime in the next 12, 18 months, you know, Bitcoin can be over 150,000. But that's because, you know, the, the backdrop for Bitcoin is so much more favorable today. We, we've got more visible demand from the spot ETF. And we know the supply dynamic is improving with the halving coming up, which is less than a month away. It does help that the Fed is becoming uh, dovish. I mean, that's easier monetary policy. And I think from a regulatory perspective, we had so many hammers dropped in the last 12 months, really 18 months, that Unless it's going to be worse over the next two years, you know, Bitcoin's already faced sort of the peak of regulatory backlash. And it, it got through the old highs. We, we had uh, a true Bitcoin bull on earlier saying that in, in previous instances where it, it has reached uh, a new high, that it doubles fairly quickly after that. I mean, he said 18 days. Uh, the, the minute it hit a new high, it sold off 10, uh, almost $10,000 to 59, but it's back to 67 today. Um, how long before it doubles again? I mean, could you see that in, in the near term, another doubling? Uh, I mean, near term, it, it's, it's hard to know near term. Joe, uh, I know our digital strategist, Sean Farrell, said that it's typical to consolidate after making a new high. So he thinks for the next nine or 10 days, we're going to be maybe chopping around here. But we, we saw it with the, the spot Bitcoin ETF inflows, like, you know, BlackRock seeing almost 800 million in inflows. So I think as long as there's strong spot demand and there aren't eager sellers, uh, you do have a market that's out of balance, that there's too much demand for Bitcoin, not enough supply created through the block reward. Right. And as a measure of, of risk on, I, I, I guess the Nasdaq sometimes even tracks Bitcoin, doesn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, it's a, a study we did several years ago showed that the best years for Bitcoin occurred when the S&P and the Nasdaq had their best year. So I think it does con sort of confirm the idea that Bitcoin is, is a risk on asset today. So as long as Bitcoin does well, it's, it's actually bullish for stocks. Did you notice the other day the, the Wall Street Journal 
in the headline, it, it was describing the move in, in Bitcoin, and it said a, a new high for the currency. I had never seen that in, uh, in the Wall Street Journal before. Usually, I don't, know what the, I don't know what you call it. I still don't know what to call it, very, really. But uh, front page, it said currency. Is it a currency? Yeah, I mean, that's a, uh, I, I miss that. That's a great term. It's certainly better than someone calling it sardine cans or tulip bubbles. Just to put a fine point on this issue about the correlation with the markets, and how do you, you so if you're, you're saying it's correlated to the markets uh, and we have a market that's that's doing quite well. And as we said, we appears the economy is doing quite well. The idea that it would do very well in a bad economy, which is what a lot of people have been trying to suggest, I think, on this broadcast earlier today. Is that right or wrong? Uh, you know, I, I think Bitcoin is a, a, a hedge against uh, unsound money. And, and that's why when Joe, you know, talked about it as a currency, that's how many people do view it, because, uh, you know, Bitcoin has its own unit value and it's measured against dollars. And I think it's the same way people measure uh, gold against dollars. So I think if there is an event and we've seen it in Turkey or Venezuela that when those currencies collapse, Bitcoin has been a way for people to preserve wealth. So I don't want to see that test sort of put in the U.S., but I think that's one reason people own Bitcoin.